To break our over-reliance on records produced by instrumentation, it's imperative to produce stimuli based on perceptual structure and the human unworld, through which we fashion our relationship with the real. In previous publications, I've carefully tried to tease out and render visible, almost one by one, a raft of differentials between experiential vision and optical projection or picture space, while always retaining sufficient pictorial elements to avoid the exercise being dismissed as creative subjectivity. The drawings and paintings here aim to simply record what is occurring to me without reference to arbitrary geometry, conceptual consideration or pictorial convention, and show just how far removed one is from the other. One of the biggest issues relating to the phenomenon of vision remains how we package all the information that occurs to us. How does the phenomenon, the relationship we form with the real, present? Somehow we present very significant scale changes across the phenomenon or engage in perceptual abbreviation that doesn't seem to interfere with our comprehension of the scene. We are truly engaged in multi-layered, creative processes of engagement and realization, heavily reliant on neural feedback circuits, learned experience and careful choreography, involving composition dependent on our intent in the world. Traditionally, processes developed by artists are subsequently adopted and deployed by others as communication tools, the carriers of content or meaning. Hence, a new form of illusionary space is a big deal. It changes the fundamentals of how we communicate, while revealing new aspects of our developing relationship with the real. The invention of the camera has interfered with that relationship. As indicated, some visual artists, and I'm sure some musicians, have kept the faith in a world dominated by third-party observation and a conceptualized notional reality, to provide us with the essential groundwork for change. We need to found a system of communication that works in accordance with the fascinating capabilities and efficiencies of experiential reality. There is clearly a great deal that we simply do not currently understand about observation. It's equally clear that instrumentation does not stand in for experiential reality. What do the records made by instrumentation actually mean? It's imperative to produce stimuli based on perceptual structure and the human unworld. The records detected by instrumentation lie almost entirely outside the set. We seem to have forgotten this. Indeed, we appear to be compulsively driven to forget this. The so-called deformations seen in artwork are showing us flashes of this perceptual structure. We're no longer journeying on some vague heading. We are residing at the destination to look back upon the former paradigm. Vision space is a new form of illusionary space. While we are no longer comparing and contrasting between independent points of order safely couched within the vernacular of optical projection, we have disentangled the strands to understand that we should set one of the systems aside. It's superseded as we can understand that it's not producing valid stimuli with respect to human visual perception. Virtual reality is a misconcept. While embedded within the environment, the real, we generate reality as biological systems. It can't be virtual. I took this photo a couple of weeks ago. It's not what I saw when I stood in front of the scene. The differences are simply too great for vision to be just some sort of derivative of optical projection dependent on simply the rectilinear propagation of light. Even with the additional shots to make up the panorama, the ensemble has almost nothing to do with the experience. This sketch, on the other hand, captures basic experientially derived information about the scene, revealing the length to which anyone wanting to render the scene in accordance with the phenomenon from photographic media will have to go. We must engage in some sort of perceptual compression. 
yet I say compression as though this is some function that can be imposed upon a base picture. This isn't the case. There isn't a base picture to compress. Optical projection doesn't occur. So I have plumbed for condensation, but considered local consolidation, as I think this speaks to neural function and Bayesian processing, if not the global level of comprehension. We infer from the condensed presentation, enabling us to comprehend a proportion scene. The condensation processes must form a fundamental facet of human perceptual structure. As I look out of the studio into the garden, I can record the scene with a camera. I can direct it to take multiple shots to compile to some sort of pseudo-experiential view, but it looks unconvincing. Otherwise I can step back and play the third-party remote observer that science traditionally adopts through its instrumentation, but this is also not what was seen. Or I can draw what's actually occurring as I stand at the observation point and intuitively record experiential reality. The preferred option, surely. What's depicted in the intuitive record has next to nothing to do with the optical projection or picture space. This is vision space. Look at the paint can set out on the floor. There's significant condensation occurring throughout contextual vision. At the extremities the widths of objects are more than halved, yet at the centre there's considerable stretch in the y-axis that makes it look as though we've somehow slightly changed our viewing angle. Yet we don't notice any of this as it's occurring to us. We don't have the picture record to hold against the experience. In reality we can of course make multiple fixations and by so doing unfold the condensed areas, making visual appreciation an activity we engage in and not something we simply detect. So back to the painting of St Ives. What did I do? I took the very basic line drawing and used the limited but key pointer markers as the cornerstones and simply fitted information from the photographic record around them. When the painting was completed, I turned back to the photographs and photoshopped them to fit the intuitive record. The ontology here is correct. There's quite a difference. Is the painting closer to a visual encounter on which we should base our stimuli and information display systems? You bet it is, and I can demonstrate that it is, and I can set out the data structures so we can model visual awareness and explore the system. We can then at least present our perceptual system with valid, perceptually structured stimuli. To help us understand this in terms of a 2D artwork, we must first consider what is a blank piece of paper to us. The world lived and recorded, fixation by fixation, will not add up to picture space. Picture space is a conceptualization, an imposed geometry, a stand-in for experiential activity. It's some sort of abbreviated and abstracted summary of what can be deduced. This summary may be useful, but it keeps a massive amount from us pertinent to our relationship with the real. We should get back to first-hand accounts from the human unwelt. The total reliance on photographic media and our other forms of information capture must be re-evaluated. It's clear that instrumentation does not stand in for experiential reality.